one. OCU gets the win over Mid-America Christian here with Coach Vinay Patel. And Coach, your shooting would not let you lose this game. 19 of 33 point shooting today. Your thoughts on the game? Sheesh, I mean, that's a lot of threes uh, <laughs> for us, 30 of them. Um, you know, our defensive goal, and, and again, I, you know me, and you, you guys have talked to me for a while now. Uh, that's what we try to pride ourselves on. Our goal as a team, and I don't give us a lot of just game-to-game -game goals, was to limit them to 24 three-point attempts for the game. Uh, they just came off a game where they attempted 34. So I said, we want to we want to pressure the basketball and try to attempt to keep them at 24 attempts. And when I look at the stat sheet, uh, that's exactly how many they took. Uh, so I thought we did a good job with that. Um, you know, hitting those shots, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, we made a lot of assisted plays mm -hmm. to get those shots. And when this team is good offensively, we're sharing the basketball, we're moving the basketball. We had a great one, maybe the second possession of the game where we found Mark Howell in the corner on an extra pass. Uh, but when we're playing like that, uh, I really like coaching this team. And not just because the shots are going in either, because there's times you can hear me saying good shot even when we miss because there there's shots and there's things offensively that we're continuing trying to improve because, you know, this is still a young team, new team as far as uh, personnel, but we're finally starting to get healthy. You know, Joe Clark is, is getting closer. He's about 75%. Trey, Cl Trey uh, Bryant is getting closer. He's up to about 70 75%. Uh, with his injury, and, and you know, I've said all along, a healthy team that we have here I think is a, a pretty good team. So, uh, you know, for us to hit that many shots, I mean, that, that's good, but 18 assists a lot better. If Trey Bryant's at 75%, that's terrifying. 21 points, 6 of 8 shooting today, 7 of 7 at the line, but th this was the best that I've seen Trey look. Uh, maybe for you. I, I mean, I'm <laughs> telling you, we, we in the fall, we've, we've seen uh, some pretty impressive play from him. He's a very yeah. talented kid. Uh, he, he's coming back from a knee injury, and, and it, it's an interesting injury uh, because, the, you know, we do an MRI and there's nothing torn in there. And, uh, you know, he has to get a shot in his knee, and it's one of those where it just it's supposed to slowly but surely get better. So, you know, we're still in the early stages of that. So, to me, you know, every day that passes by is another day he starts feeling a little bit better. And, and you know, the, the better he gets, the better Joe Clark gets with his shoulder, uh, you know, the better our team can be. So, uh you know, as, as, as he gets better, I think our team gets better. And, and, but, you know, to me, Mark Howell really pushed the pace tonight. We were flying up and down the court. Uh, he might have not got the assist. We call it the hockey assist sometimes, yeah. where he may make the play and the next guy makes the pass for us to get the assist. There was a late play that, that we hit a three, and it was all because of Mark and, and him pushing the pace. And that's something we really harped on after the Langston game. Uh, I did not like the pace of play that we played after losing to Langston. We walked the ball up the floor time and time again, and that's just never been my style uh, as a coach. I, I want us to push the pace, and then we want to run sets when needed. And, uh, but when we're running like that, and I don't really have to call a lot of stuff, it makes, a, makes my life a lot easier. I know that. Well-rounded game for Chris Williams today. He had 23 points, but also five rebounds. And how about eight assists for Chris today? That was impressive. You know, he overcame a, a, a terrible uh, first half, in my opinion. Uh, you know, he had one assist to three turnovers at halftime. Uh, so that means he had seven assists to one turnover in the second half. So that's a, a very good half. And then and then he started hitting some shots in the second half. You know, where I get frustrated is, you know, you guys don't see it because all you see is, is game night. Chris Williams is in this gym more than any kid on our team, getting shots up and things like that and working on his game. And so for me to watch him in the first half just turn down shot after shot after shot, it's just frustrating as a coach. And that's what we talked about at halftime. I, I don't know in, in 14 years of me doing this, have I asked a kid to shoot more than Chris in a game because he turns down so many shots. You know, he shot fakes him, he shot fakes him, he shot fakes him. And then the, you know, that ends up being a turnover. And I'm just going, you don't understand how hard our team's working to get you a good look. You know, uh, having to be our leading scorer right now, we're getting everyone's best defender on him. Yep. So for us to work to get him an open shot and him to turn it down, it, it's really hurtful for our teams uh, at times. But in the second half, he did a much better job of, of when he was open. He started with an N one three in the corner here. Uh, so if he can play like that and be a little bit more consistent, you know, he's a much better player than what he showed in the first half. Eric Watchery with a solid game today, too. Four of seven on three, scored 13 points. He had four assists and a steal as well. Also played 37 minutes, and, and he's your kind of, quintessential 3 and D guy, I guess, because you ask him to play the, the opponent's best player a lot on defense. Correct, correct. You know, he, he uh, 
takes the other team's best player almost every game, and then so does Joe Clark. You know, we'll bring yep. in Joe, and, and uh, you know, we subbed out Elijah to go a little bit uh, more of a defensive lineup late uh, to give Eric a little bit more of a break. But, uh, yeah, we're asking him to do that a lot, and then we're asking him to hit open shots. Uh, you know, when he takes eight shots and seven of them are threes, I don't care because that's his job is to hit open shots for us and help us space the floor offensively. Uh, but where he helps us, sometimes it's, it's – uh, it doesn't go in the stat sheet. You know, mm -hmm. he's talking consistently on the floor, organizing guys, getting them to spots, uh, talking in huddles. I, I played him at the two, the three, and the four tonight, uh, and he never even practices at the four. But he's such a sharp kid. I can pl play him a lot of different places, use him a, a lot of different ways. Uh, you know, I I've had opposing coaches tell me Eric Watry and Elijah Chrisman are kind of the unsung heroes uh, on our team so far this season. And, and I would agree with that because – uh, you know, their solid play at times is what's helpful to the team. You know, and, it, and again, mm -hmm. it's stuff that doesn't show up on here. You know, Elijah Chrisman flies in there for an early offensive rebound. You know, and just talking to Coach Gamblin, that was the first thing he talks about is, is you know, uh, when we watch film on Elijah, what jumps out at you is how hard he crashes for rebounds. And, boom, he early he subs in and gets one right away. You know, and so those two guys have been really good for us. They need to continue to get better, as do a lot of our guys on our team. This was a big one as far as conference standings are concerned. You guys and Mac, you were kind of right there uh, with one another uh, back of the what was a four-way tie that's now a five-way tie for fourth place in the conference. But this was a big one for you as far as conference positioning is concerned because as we've talked about a lot, you started off with the, or you had those four straight losses there, but by the end of this week, you could be flirting with second or third place in the conference. It's all jumbled up, uh, you know, and, and we're looking at it. I mean, we have a standings board that we keep in the locker room. But what we've talked about is every two weeks. And that's mm -hmm. what we're doing right now is we're breaking it down every two weeks. So after we lost that four straight, we said we're going to win these next two weeks. And, you know, uh, obviously you can't look at it like we look at it at times, but we went three and one the last two weeks. Yeah, it was really disappointing after we lost to Langston. But over the course of the last two weeks, there wasn't one team in our league that went undefeated in all their games. Right. You know, two teams lost one game uh, besides us, and everybody else lost more than one game. So now we're on to these two weeks, and we got six games in two weeks, and we needed to get off to a good start. And, and same thing, you know, uh, I don't know if we'll win the next game or the next game or the next game or win, but, you know, our focus is that day and that game, and we're trying to just kind of minimize that and, and keep focus on – a smaller picture, I guess, would be the best way to put it, to help ourselves get back in the race. On the road at Bay Cone on Thursday night, back home for John Brown on Saturday afternoon. What What is your upcoming uh, five or six days look like? It's crazy. I mean, we play <laughs> Thursday, Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So uh, we're going to prep for Bay Cone tomorrow, and then we're going to play them on Thursday. You know, there's not, not much else uh, we can do other than that. We will watch some of this game, especially the first half, and kind of figure out where we can get a little bit better. I like the way after the Langston game, we just have it in the first semester. We didn't have a lot of time because of class schedules to watch a lot of tape with this team. So we lost on Saturday. We came back Sunday and watched a lot of the second half where I didn't think we did a great job offensively on, on where we can improve without doing it out here in practice because we just don't have the days with all the games coming up. And so we're trying to save legs as well. I mean, you just said it, Eric Watcher plays 37 minutes but he's still got five games left in two weeks. Yeah. So, you know, we, we want to try to get them off their feet a little bit, so we're trying to spend a little bit more time in film. Uh, and this is a sharp bunch. I think they learn from watching it. And what I like about them is, is I'm telling you, and, and this is – and it doesn't happen easy, but this group really likes one another. They like spending time with each other off the floor. They like spending time together when we're doing different things as a team. Uh, but it's been unique like that, that you don't see, like – three or four guys here, three or four guys there. They're, they all are together all the time. So, uh, you know, that's what's been fun to watch this team is kind of grow, and I hope we continue to do so even on the floor, uh, you know, day by day. All right, Coach, thanks a lot. 97-81, the final score 